This is the second update of the Elizabethtown College hybrid solar tracking system for the 2012 Phoenix Contact Explore competition. Um, so this is our mock-up of our frame. Um, this is the mount that will hold our Lutron motors, which will then be mounted to uh, the panel itself, and that'll rotate through the day. And then throughout the months, uh, a linear actuator uh, attached here is going to extend to increase our angle uh, for the winter time. Right now it's set in the summer setting, but as the actuator extends, uh, it's gonna get more and more towards the winter setting. Because of the way our solar panels are installed, because of the limited amount of analog inputs a nano can have, we're gonna be using two nanos in our final control installation. One's gonna be used to measure the power of our array, and the other is gonna be the main brain of the system. And that, that's what will be actually controlling the movement of the panels. This flowchart is a high-level overview of what tasks our program will perform. Whenever the program is started, it will first perform the necessary initializations, which include initializing the solar calculator, running the solar calculator for the current day, and moving all panels to the horizontal tilt position for the current day. After the initialization is completed, the program jumps to the main loop, where it will run continuously until turned off. The first check that will be performed in the main loop is to check if the current time is between sunrise and sunset, so we know whether or not the sun is in the sky. If the sun is in the sky, we will scan the sky for the optimal power position, and then the nano will request the updated array current from the server. Using the collected values and the array current, the optimal position for the array to be moved to will be determined, and then the move will be performed. After this, there will be a 12 minute wait, making each interval about 15 minutes long. If the sun is not currently in the sky, then we will check to see if the day has changed. If the day has not changed, we will repeatedly check until the day changes. When the change has occurred, we will run the solar calculator for the current day, and then wait until 15 minutes before sunrise to perform the move of all the panels to the horizontal tilt position for the day. At this point, the main loop will start over. Since the nanos are only Modbus slaves, they have no way to directly talk to each other. So we needed a Modbus master to act as a bridge between them. So to do that, I wrote a Java application that acts as the Modbus master. So when our control nano needs an updated array current, it requests from the master, the Java application, that it needs that updated current. And the Java application will go grab the updated array current from this nano and transfer it over to the control nano. To demonstrate my Java Modbus master application, I have two nanos set up here. This one represents the array power monitoring nano, and it's generating values by counting up from 0 to 100,000 and then starting over. And these values are used to simulate different array currents being measured. And this one is to represent the control nano. And every time you see that LED blink, that means the Java application is checking to see if this nano needs an updated array current. And the way I have it set up now, every one second, the Java application checks if it needs an update. And then every three seconds is when the nano actually is requesting an update. And here on the Java console window, you can see that it's every third check that the Java application transfers a value from the array power monitoring nano to the control nano.